Hey, thanks for checking out Go 96.3. It's Miles the DJ, and I had the absolute privilege to speak with Dan Reynolds of Imagine Dragons recently. Uh, we touched on the new single, Believer, details on the upcoming album. Uh, you may not know this, but Dan signed one of my favorite musicians, K Flay, to his record label. So we talked about her. We talked about overcoming adversity. Very, very cool conversation that began with me asking him where he was. I am sitting at my house in Las Vegas, Nevada, and on a couch. <laughs> I love Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the best, right? It's great. I've born and raised here my whole life, and I wouldn't have it any other way. What's the uh, What's the biggest difference that you think there is in Las Vegas between the locals and the the tourists? It's honestly, it's pretty night and day. It's you can't even like correlate it because it, Vegas actually has a small town feeling to the locals. Everybody feels like they know each other, and the neighborhoods are small and nice, and the schools are. I don't know. It just feels uh, there's Red Rock Mountain, there's Lake Mead. Everybody goes to the lake, um, goes hiking up in Red Rock. And there's a lot of cool small local venues and eats in downtown. Uh, Vegas has been really reworked and has a cool kind of uh, art scene. And, yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, you don't really go on a strip. It's not like you're like, yeah, hey, what do you guys want to do now? Let's go to the Wynn and the Bellagio and then go clubbing down. It's like you don't live that life when you live here. You know? No, man, you go to, like, Beauty Bar, right? Yeah, you go. Exa- you know. You know. That's exactly right. You go to Beauty Bar. You go to the bunkhouse. You go to the local venues, you know. Yeah, man, Vegas is cool, man. I uh, I have a soft spot for it. I spent the first, I was born in Vegas, and I spent the first, like, five years of my life there. So I've always had oh, sort right. of a little soft spot for uh, for your neck of the woods. Yeah, I, I love Vegas. I want to tell a quick story that um, it just sort of shows, like, how big Imagine Dragons have gotten. I used to work in radio uh, in the Bay Area, and we had you guys play a show, uh, Not So Silent Night. I think it was 2012. I remember one of the bands on the bill was running late, and the sound check went late, and the doors went late, and it was at this point in your career where we had you guys open. And right. I think we your set was like 20 minutes and then 15 minutes and then 10 minutes. And we told you <laughs> we, we can only have you guys play for 10 minutes, and you looked really bummed. Yep. And then we came back at you later and said, you know what, actually, we, we found five minutes for you. You can play for 15 now. And <laughs> we might as well have told you that your record just went platinum because you guys were so... <laughs> Excited, and then I'm like, look, fast forward a few years, you're in the Super Bowl doing a having your new single in a commercial, man. I mean, do you oh, ever man. do you remember that at all? And, and of course, oh man, I can't, I can't even tell you. Like, I, I remember there was this one time when um, I don't know, this is a long story, but I, I let me just say that stuff happens all the time when you're a young band, and you just roll with the punches. You know what I mean? It's like you're grateful for every minute you have. You're grateful for every person in the crowd. And yeah, I'm glad you bring that up because I always, like it's it's great for me to constantly be reminded, you know, um, that that those things are a, a reality. And we have gotten to this point now where people come out to the shows, and man, it wasn't always like that. I remember so many shows where you go out and you peek outside the curtain, or you have the tour manager come like backstage before you go on at the club, and they're like, "Hey guys, sorry, it's a bust. There's like ten people out there. Good luck though." And you're just like, "Oh." And, like, two of them are your cousins, and one is the girl you're trying to impress, and sure. now she's going to think you're a loser. So it's like you have years of that when you're a small local band, you know? And so you got to – yeah, it's, it's a great reminder for sure. Where was the – or rather, what was the turning point for you? Because to me, working in radio, I – you know, Interscope worked us on, on you guys for a minute and then sure. played some radio shows, played some smaller shows, and then it seemed like – one day, I, not for you. I mean, this was a this was years in the making. But for someone that wasn't involved at all, really, uh, in the band, it seemed right. like an overnight sort of thing. There was a moment somewhere, I think, in 2013, where you turned into one of the biggest bands in the world. Do you can you pinpoint like kind of when that happened? You know, there was. I, I think that there was definitely some some pivotal moments that launched the band in a big way. I think the Grammys, uh, the performance with Kendrick, really elevated the band uh, as far as just people knowing the band and things like that um there was you know different award shows different like looks on television but honestly it really was just a, a a grind but a fast grind it was you know we had been a band for four years at that point so for us it felt like we've been grinding you know endlessly but you know four years is pretty small 
in, in retrospect. But at the time, it felt like, man, we were we had been poor living in the same house together for four years and we were sick of each other. And then, you know, that's when things started. It was just, you know, two of our members quit actually right before we got signed. Cause they were like, well, this has been too hard. We're tired of being broke and we want to go have normal lives. And then the band got signed a month later. So, you know, it's like a lot of little things and then big moments. And man, it was, it's, it's crazy. Cause we also, um, we didn't skip any steps in far in terms of um, venues, and we and we could have. I remember when we played like theaters, and then they said, "Hey, man, this is going so good, we could sell out arenas." And we specifically were like, "No, but we haven't played amphitheaters yet, and we haven't we, we haven't played larger theaters. Like we want to play those venues before we move there." And yeah. I'm glad we did, you know. And we moved through it, but we tore we toured endlessly. Is really what it came down to. We toured like 300 days a year at least. Do you ever keep in touch with the two members who quit the band? And are they are they doing okay now? Are they are they fine? Are they actually yes? Um, I think at first it was hard, probably. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't speak for them. You know, maybe for them it was fine, but I, I think probably in the beginning it was it was a little rough because we've been together so long, and then the way things went, you know, it, it was probably a little tough. But they ended up they were husband and wife, um, and. They he went on to start a band called The Moth and the Flame, which is now you know a really great alternative act that's done really good on alternative radio. Sure, and he plays drums for them. And to now, especially this last year, we are all really really close friends. Like they come over, we go to dinner, we all hang out all the time. And so I think that it, you know there were a couple of years that it was a little a little weird, but we all we all kind of moved past it together, you know. And, and there was never hard feelings. It wasn't like yeah. they were never fired, and it wasn't like they left because they were mad. It was like, hey, guys, you know, we've been grinding for four years. And we're, we're, we're tired of being broke and living in the same house together, and we're married, and we want to have our own house. So it made perfect sense, you know. No, I get it, man. And, you know, it sounds like yeah. we're doing okay. Moth in the Flame is a great band. We've played They're them great. quite a bit yeah. as well. So I want to get into the single in a second, but first uh, I want to talk about a, an artist who's – Near and dear to my heart as well. I mentioned living in the Bay Area for most of my life. Uh, Kay Flay, also from there. I've known about her for a long time. One of the sweetest people on the planet. Oh, man. She's amazing, right? Kind of kind of blowing up right now with, uh, with Blood in the Cut. We have a sold-out show yeah. with her on Monday as we record this. And you signed her yeah. to your label, right? I did. Yeah, she's been kind of, a, kind of like one of those underground artists that, you know, like, people know maybe like passionate music people know of so like you know her but the general world doesn't know her and they need to know her because she is just so incredible and i had known for a little while that at some point i wanted to start my own label and give kind of young artists that needed a chance a chance to be on a bigger platform and so yeah i i approached her and i told her i was a big fan of the music and she, and and she um she just was I can't explain it. You know, if you meet her, like you said, you met her and she's, she's just such a rad individual. She has incredible things to say, but in a very humble way, she's very intelligent. She went to like Stanford, I think on yeah. full ride. Um, and she's very politically active, but also very reasonable and intelligent and m emotional and just, man, she is just a powerhouse of a woman. And so she is needed to me in this music industry. Um, more and more. And so to see that she's doing so well, especially with like Blood in the Cut, which is such a true alternative song, it just makes me so happy. Like I'm so thrilled for her. She's one of my best friends now. And, and, uh, so it's gone beyond just, you know, being a label president. Um, but it's, it's, it's awesome. And her music kind of, I never really even thought about this until you, I just heard you talking about it, but her music mirrors Imagine Dragons a little bit in that it's a little pop, a little alternative, a little, little hip-hop. Like, there's a lot yeah. going on, so. Yeah, I think that's probably why, I, I mean, I dug it, because that's the music. I You know, I grew up on 90s hip-hop. Like, I grew up on Tupac and Biggie, and 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 that's always been a big part of our music and, and influences us in a lot of ways, not just, like, some straight rock band or something, you know. And so she does things that are really unconventional, but... Um, she does it in a way that doesn't feel forced and feels very natural for her. And lyrically, she's really one of the most intelligent lyrical uh, writers that I have met. I, I'm totally inspired by her lyrical content always. Uh, she puts so much thought into every word she says, and she says it in a very interesting way that feels fresh and new. And Yeah, she's incredible. She really is. 
I couldn't agree more, and uh, I feel very similar with uh, with your band and this new song, Believer. It's in a Nintendo commercial at the moment, which was in the Super Bowl. That must have been pretty crazy. Uh, tell me a little bit about that experience. Tell me about the song, and, and where is it coming from? Is it a new album? Is it a soundtrack? Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, so this is the first song off the upcoming album. Um, we've done a, we did a couple one-off songs here and there, um, but this is the first official song for the new album, and it kind of sets the tone for what's to come, uh, both visually, thematically, and sonically. Um, you know, this has been a really healthy year for me, maybe the most healthy year of my life, mentally, um, I've just and, and physically. Like I've, I was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis and ulcerative colitis, which are autoimmune diseases, when I was 22. And that was, it was really, it was a really difficult time for me because my body was breaking down in a lot of ways. And I won't get into the, to exactly uh, the details of, of what those diseases are, but um, it ba- basically your body is just eating itself. Like it's just inflaming itself. And so physically I was not in good place. And then mentally I, you know, since I was young, I've always dealt with anxiety and depression, but it really took on an all time high. And that smoke and mirrors kind of was written through that period. So, mm. I mean, I'm really proud of that record, but it's a, it, to me, it's a really dark record in a lot of ways, like a very searching record. And what, what believer is for me and what this upcoming record is for me is, is the point of arrival in a lot of ways, which okay. is why the artwork for Believer is what we chose, because it's kind of like this dark 80s thing, which I love the 80s. And then it's like someone arriving in the dark at this beautiful, brilliant, kind of like rainbow, like a point of color, you know? That's so cool. And I really feel like this last year has been like a colorful year for me, you know? And so to me, it's like um, the song is about being grateful, being grateful for pain, being grateful for those things, because, you know, it's brought me to where I am now. It's really striking a chord with me as you as you talk about all this. And if you wouldn't mind, like, can you elaborate a little bit on, you know, where you were, not where you were during Smoke and Mirrors, but kind of what got you to this believer point? Like, what sure. what were you doing in that time to kind of get you to this place to where you are now? Totally. And in fact, I'd, I'd glad to be happy, uh, to talk about it because I feel like there's a lot of people who deal with depression and anxiety, and it can feel really overwhelming, uh, especially when it goes on for a long period of time, when you feel like you're just walking through a fog, which is basically what I felt like. Like, I don't know, every day just felt very gray. Um, yeah. And when, when you when you really get in the heat of depression, it's not like people are like, oh, well, I get sad, and I'm not dep-. Like, depression is different than being sad. It's like an ongoing state of being that's very gray. Um, and that's kind of where I was at. And then I, I did a lot of self-help. I read a lot of books. Uh, I did a lot of therapy. I went to like three different therapists and just worked through problems. And I I really was going through a big spiritual crisis in my life too. Mm. And so I resolved a lot of those things and kind of found a good new spiritual ground for me. Um, and you know, I try, I, I'd been, I, I had doctors that had put me on like a depression medication and I tried that for like a month here or there. And it didn't, it didn't work for me personally, but I know it works for some people. So I don't want to like, you know, make a stand either way on that because I know that I've had friends who that works for it. But for yeah. me, it's been a lot of therapy, it's been a lot of just like talking and, and like, you know, looking at my feelings, which I think sometimes, you know, we don't want to do, but it was really healthy for me, you know, man, I appreciate you sharing that. That's uh, honestly, that's very, very inspiring. And I, I think I listened to this song now in a whole, whole new light. So, uh, Having this conversation with you is very cool, man. Thank you uh, for right, sharing man. that. Thank you. Good. Yeah, for sure. Good stuff, man. Believer is the single from Imagine Dragons. Uh, we had you in the Twin Cities uh, about a year and a half ago. You had Metric on the bill, Halsey. Uh, sold out a show at the XL in St. Paul. Uh, what could people expect in 2017? Will you be touring again? Any memories from that Twin Cities show? What's going to be happening with you guys? Oh, man. Yeah. First of all, Twin Cities has always been good to us from the very beginning. That has always been one of, like, the shows that in the U.S. were on our tour, we're, we always know that they're going to bring it. Um, as far as this next year and touring, I, I can't announce exactly what it is, but I will say very soon uh, you will know, and it will. It, we have a big. There's a lot of touring upcoming in our in our sites. So, Believer is the beginning of of the album. It's the beginning of everything, and as most people know, you know when a single comes out, then everything follows relatively soon. So yeah. it's, it's, it's right around the corner. Well, Hey man, the song's great. And seriously, I remember, it seems like yesterday, man, another show I, we had you at was a, a, a festival called BFD. And we, we put you guys yeah, on yeah. before a great, great San Francisco band geographer uh, played after you guys. 
I um, remember Geographer. They're they so awesome. great. Yeah, they're really incredible. Great voice. I mean, really, really good stuff. But it's just, man, it just... It's so cool to see how how big you've gotten, and even talking to you and hearing how down to earth you are and humble. Um, a lot of bands in, in your position now aren't like that, so the fact that you are and so willing to open yourself up and talk and just be a cool dude, man. I I really do appreciate that. I appreciate the music, and uh, we'll be sure to play it a lot on Go 96.3. Hey, I really appreciate that as well, man. And thanks thanks for the support from so early on. Really, like believing in us at a very young age, that means a lot. So thank you. No doubt, man. And hey, uh, you're giving me and Christine something to talk about on Monday. Uh, I'll let her know that we spoke. And uh, man, really, really cool stuff. Good conversation. Love it. I love Christine. Give her my love. Give her a big hug. For me. Dan Reynolds, Imagine Dragons, thank you for the time. Uh, continued success. And we'll see you in the Twin Cities soon. All right. Take care.